business development for the medical application at EOS GmbH and I will share my presentation with Dr. Madawi who will tell you later on about some very interesting software solutions. Brief agenda, a little bit about additive manufacturing, what EOS is doing in that market, a case study and then I will hand over to Dr. Madawi. Who is EOS? Who knows the U.S. actually in the audience? Anybody? Oh, that's good. One, at least one. So E.S. is a company doing rapid prototyping, rapid manufacturing, and we have been founded 21 years ago, and all rapid industries are coming from the automobile industry, automotive industry, and we are a solution provider for plastic and metal laser sintering. I will tell you later on what that is. <coughs> We are worldwide recognized as the leader in this industry and we have more than 1,000 systems installed. For, for any cut system that doesn't, doesn't sound much, but for us it's a lot. So these are the machines our company is producing. These are the plastic machines for plastic laser sintering and that's the machine for metal. We actually have at our booth. You can, you're very welcome to visit us at our booth. Do you know the number? 2783 is the good number. So what is, what is additive manufacturing? Who have heard about anything about additive manufacturing here in the audience? Okay, a few of them. So what we do is, we get a design, for instance something what Dr. Madawi can provide. We slice that design in very thin layers and then we tell a laser in our machine to expose this layer in a powder can be polymer powder or can be metal powder. And that's how we generate parts in a powder bed. That's what's called rapid prototyping or rapid manufacturing. And this offers lots of uh, possibilities. Actually, what you can have with that system, you can have the freedom of design. You can build lightweight structures. You will see a little bit more about. You can optimize your functionality. You have new materials with new properties. Altogether, this will bring a lot of cost advantage, especially for small series production or for customized parts. And you offer a lot of integrated functionality. Of course, with all the rapid prototyping or rapid manufacturing, you will be much faster at the market and you have a customization tool. What we provide is, we provide a solution to process materials to print parts actually. What we need at the front end, we need partners who deliver the right design software to actually design the parts we can print in our machine. And of course we need the material and all the finishing technique at the end. So what our aim is, we want to deliver a full solution to our customers, not only selling a printing device and then you leave you alone and tell you, okay, now you have to search for, the, for something, how to finish the parts or how to make your design alone. What we are doing in medical is, we actually divided the market in three pillars. We are focusing very much on the dental market at the moment, a very successful market. And then we have the big medical device industry. The medical device industry, the main driver in that industry is the orthopedic implant market. That's why we generated a separate pillar here, because about 25% of all the revenue in the medical device industry is paid in orthopedics. And then you have all everything which is here at the show, all kind of medical devices, any parts for machine, instruments, kind of endoscopes or whatever. Back to the left pillar, the dental market, the most successful application at the moment for EUS is producing crowns and bridges. So if you go to the dentist and you need a crown or a bridge, it might happen that you get a laser scented part into your mouth. The dentist will take an impression of your bite. Out of that, a dental technician will generate a plaster model and this model is then scanned. Then there is a small cut system, a special dental cut system, which is then designing the coping or the bridge. We are using our, our machine to print your coping. And actually then, 
when you have the coping in your hand, the dental technician will do the final veneering, actually the artwork, that uh, you get the same color as your neighbor tooth and you get it back into your mouth. That's quite rapid. It will happen within two days. That's at least what our customers promise. What you need here, you're dealing with medical devices. You need a full certified system. And currently, about 1.5 million units a year are produced in that technique. Might happen to you if you need a crown and bridge. Another application quite successful here in the US. One of our customers, Smith & Nephew, and some others, are producing customized patient-matched drill guides or cutting guides. So what they do is they get the data from an MRI or CT scan, design the cutting guide or drill guide, and produce it in one of our plastic sintering machines. That offers lots of benefits. It will shorten us shorten the design in the OR, which is probably the most expensive time in the world. And by that, the surgeon can do more operations a day. The patient doesn't need to be that long in the OR, so you need less anesthesia. Lots of benefits here. And that's a day-to-day -day manufacturing. I hope nobody will need a knee surgery pretty soon, but this is what you get at the moment. Again, dental a little bit into the implant market. One of our customers in Italy is producing this Tixos implant that's by Liada Italy, and they already announced that implant here in the US, getting a 510K for it. This implant actually <coughs> is a very interesting design because usually the screws or the implant, the dental screws are very shiny parts, highly polished, and this one has a very rough surface, actually using the benefit of the technology because we provide, by producing the parts, a rough surface. And with having, by having this rough surface, you get a very good osseo integration of the part. Again, I hope you don't need it. Just recently, we finished a case study or an R&D project in Europe where the aim was that with our technology, we can produce customized implants with a new material in the market, a laser-sinted peak. This happened in the SIX framework program. At the, it's a European, it's a combined European project called Custom IMD. Our aim was to develop the machine you see here, which is a high temperature polymer laser sintering machine. And what we tried to do is, we tried to design and to manufacture a cranial plate, which is currently produced very often in titanium. Here you see a special case. Somebody had a tumor in the brain, has a huge defect, and what he gets in is the part on the right-hand side you will get a simple titanium plate in with all benefits, but uh, sometimes not very well. So you can imagine you have a very cold area in the winter here, the brain doesn't like it. The idea was by using peak that you have a new material which is actually much more accepted by the human body, which is much closer to the natural bone. And uh, the final version of it, and here, is where Dr. Madavi comes into the game. The final version here was designed by using his software and uh, by getting all the inputs from the surgeon. And uh, later on, this was coated with a kind of hydroxyapatite appetite with another filler, and the results have been just perfect. So actually, by taking these results, it might be possible for someone to start a business by building patient med implants for with using our peak. And here, take over to Dr. Madavi, who will tell you a little bit more about the design possibility. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Sivash Madavi, um, and I'm going to talk to you about a software solution that fits very nicely into uh, EOS's manufacturing technique. Now what we do is we've created a solution that allows the design of intricate lattice structures that can vary in density depending on loading conditions and that can be manufactured in one piece using additive manufacturing. 
Here are some samples of the kind of structures we can do. These are very intricate structures um, and in the medical industry we use these primarily for osteointegration or other types of tissue integration but we also use these for light weighting of potentially medical instruments to reduce the amount of material usage um, and to make the components lighter weight for transportation. With this part here, this is called a grid topology. You can see it has a very grid type structure, but we can vary the density from being almost solid in one corner but smoothly gradiating to becoming more porous. What we have here is a value called a volume reduction coefficient, which for this component is 0.14, meaning that this object is now only 14% of the weight or material used than of the original product. And we have a wide range of these types of lattice structures that can be used to populate a solid volume, be that for light weighting or for osseointegration. integration. Each one of these has its own benefits. They can be f like provide flexibility in some regions while stiffness in the other, and they can provide a very high surface area. These parts here, for example, are very good for medical because they speak the language of pores and struts and here you can actually vary the pore and strut distribution and density throughout the component. Now these files, for those of you that know a bit more about additive manufacturing, are nice clean STL files that can be sent straight to the machine and built. Now, we can create several products with these. These are um, titanium finger implants and here you can see in the stem we've replaced the solid stem with instead a trabecular type structure that can induce osseointegration and increase the surface area. And we've done this by actually also conforming to the stem itself and we're able to then manufacture this part um, using the DMLS process in titanium or let's say cobalt chrome. We've also um, worked on acetabular cups and here this is our software in action actually taking in um, through this CAD interface and designing the porous volume. You can also with the software do finite element analysis to actually simulate how well the part performs before manufacture. So here you can see around the cup rim we fix points while um, inducing an in, uh, internal pressure within the part which results in stresses throughout the product and we can then optimize this how needed to then manufacture the part. And you can then see um, different structures that we've been able to replicate on cup surfaces to increase the surface area, um, allow the impacting into the bone but again inducing osseointegration. So these visualizations here are a mixture of renderings and of photos of different cup designs we've done um, on a conceptual basis that demonstrate both. More recently we've been working on much finer trabecular type metal and here I actually have some samples uh, with me as well which um, I can share with you after the presentation and here these parts you can see are made in uh, titanium, the substrate is manufactured at the same time as a porous volume and so they're, they're perfectly bonded together and there's no need for any additional manual work. You can see we have a very organic trabecular structure, you have full control over pore size and strut thickness and how this interfaces with the part and it can manufacture it in one piece. We've also worked on a conceptual tibial tray. Here we can see a central stem that can be used to limit any rotation within the tibial bone, um, but also these structures here, again, um, a, a random um, organic trabecular type structure that can be used to in, uh, induce more burning growth into the part volume. Uh, so that's us as a company. We work very closely with EOS to provide both the manufacturing solution and a design solution to induce uh, and improve upon the design and manufacture of implants. And I welcome any questions. Thank you. So during the manufacturing process, uh, just to repeat the question, how do we get any excess powder out? Um, this is a powder-based process, so you will find that this part is encapsulated in titanium powder. Uh, there are methods um, from shot peening or blasting or even just through compressed air or through um, vibrating the part that allow 
the, the, the semi, the uncentered powder particles to come out. Um, anything left, you can actually go through a heat treating process if needed to center any remaining part, powder particles back onto the solid substrate. So we we're talking about feature sizes. Um, here with these parts, we're going to about 150 microns in strut thickness. Um, pore size is between 250 to however big you want them to be. And these are the kind of resolutions we work at. Uh, with regard to layer thickness, on average, uh, we're talking about 20 microns in layer thickness when building the parts. Um, and I guess we could just continue discussions um, afterwards. So thank you for listening.